All right, to start with, we're gonna use an isopropyl alcohol skin cleanser here. And you can see we got these from Rite Aid. The idea here is when you pull this open, this foil lined paper pouch can be used to sterilize your fingertip. I'm gonna use my middle finger here, like that, both for comedic effect and might as well just clean the whole thing while we're at it. But the idea there is to- All the fingers touching anything. Okay, now, I'm gonna set that down here and let my finger dry. Now while that's fingers drying, I believe these are tear open. So I'm gonna tear open the bag like this. Okay, they're terrible. And we see in here, there's the, the base unit. And the blood extractor. Sample collector. Or sample collector and the lance that has a cover that you have to pop off. All right, now once you pop the cover off the lance, you're going to press this into your finger, Make like sure you get it deep enough. like that, and then pull out and squeeze it a good sized droplet like this. Because you need a, a fair amount of blood for the sample taker. Now, once you have your blood here, you're going to put this into here like this, and you're trying to uptake it like that until it's full, just like that. Okay, now I'm going to wipe my finger off on that isopropyl alcohol tab. Now, what you do here is you're going to push all the way down like this. They put finger attachments here so you can push and twist. And now you're gonna shake this one, two, three, four, five. And we're just gonna set that down. All right, now we're going to take the cartridge out from the second pouch. And we're going to, to take the cartridge out and carefully insert it into the machine. And it makes a click like that. Now you see on the display, it says wait. So we have to wait and it'll say it's ready for the sample. All right, so to actually use the unit, you take the cap off the shaker assembly and you're presented with this and you, you take it and you're going to apply the sample like that to the unit and then press down like this. And then you're going to see that it says it's running. Make sure it's flat. And you want to leave that flat on the table like that. And what it's going to do is it's going to run the test. Oh, our anniversary. This is one of my favorite expressions, three, four, five. Meg really likes this other combo. Three, two, one, I'd say that looks more like an off-white color, not as pink per se. I mean, there's my skin tone. I'm Caucasian, if you wanna, if you wanna see by comparison. Fairly light skin, actually. There's my wristwatch if you wanna compare tone mapping. So what we're looking at here is it went from being bright white to kind of a creamy warm white. Did you get enough blood Almost on pink. It, it, it that's automatic when you when you press this thing down it, it dispenses it automatically meg was concerned that i got the right, correct amount of blood yeah, but we're sure of that so another number combo i really like is one two three three, three two, two one good the quality control check went good 4.5 excellent that means the metformin's working one test remaining, that's what that means. All right, well, there it is. So I'm gonna record my data in that little piece of paper. That's how the test goes. Next, you get to watch a video of the instructions on how to convert all of this material waste into an A1C test. Thanks for watching. Okay, after that, you're gonna collect your blood in this collector. And you're going to touch the end and capillary action inside this evacuation tube in the middle of the collector. 
is going to suck the blood off the droplet off your finger into the tube. Now, you want it to fill the tube. You don't want it halfway full, and you don't want to put blood all over the end of the tube. The correct amount is like this. As soon as the capillation fills, just pull it away from your finger. If you still have blood coming out of your finger, um, put a little tissue with some pressure from another finger and hold it until it coagulates and stops bleeding. All right. Next, you're going to insert the collector into the open end. So this is the base. This part, don't screw with that. Leave that alone. You're going to insert the collector that has your blood in it into the end. And you're going to push hard while twisting to fully insert that. Now, you have to make sure this is fully inserted. And that's what they say. You want to make sure that it's completely inserted. Otherwise, it won't mix with the reagent that's inside of here correctly. And it has to be airtight. So you don't want a gap like this. It has to be snug like that. And they see not fully inserted. Keep pushing if it looks like that. Fully inserted means it's sealed. All right. Now you're going to shake it once you've completely sealed the tube. You're going to shake it back and forth for five seconds and set it aside. All right. Now you're going to take the cartridge out of its package and insert it fully into the machine. It'll make a click when it's in place. You're going to check to make sure the codes match here between the machine and the test. And then the display will display weight and sample. Sample means it's ready for the sample from the shaker. Okay, so it, it's going to tell you when it's ready. So weight means the machine's warming up, and then sample means... And they even put a little blood droplet indicator there. It means it's time to apply from the shaker. All right. Now, remove the base from the shaker. Remember that cap from way back over here? This is when we're going to remove it. So the reagent has already mixed with the blood from the little curette tube. And then you're going to pull this cap off, just as they, they show here with picture. You pull the cap down, and then you press the shaker into the opening in the cartridge, as depicted here. Press the shaker into the cartridge, remove quickly once the word run appears on the screen. So run will appear, and you'll see that the little white mark on that cartridge will have turned pinkish color as your blood has saturated it then it's going to start a timer and you don't want to handle it just leave it sitting on the table and it's going to do a quality control test result and say QC okay and then it's going to tell you that your A1C percentage is 6.7 and that's a measure of the oxidation of your red blood cells, uh, glucose oxidation. That's the whole reason the A1C test makes sense. And we see here that it was manufactured by this group. And there's their phone number if you want to call them to inquire. The reason this is a polymer technology is the, um, the type of test has to do with using polymer beads had some some kind of electrical conversion. Uh, so the polymer bead here produces some kind of um, change that the unit converts to a value using a formula. Um, you can see also that on the head unit, there's a lot number. So like on the back here, there's a lot number. And it tells you the expiration date. So... 0708 of 2022, this is no longer good. So I'm going to do my first one now and then again in a couple of months. So there's a deep dive of the instructions. Thanks for watching. Okay, here we have an at home A1C testing kit by CVS Health. I ordered this on Amazon. If you open the unit here, it comes with two pouches one set there and one set here. I removed the head unit from the box already, like that. They give you a quick reference guide. It tells you everything not to do. You want to use it after, don't, don't use the things if they're expired. Don't use it if the lock code doesn't match. 
don't leave a gap between the collector and the shaker. Uh, more on that in a moment. Uh, don't open the cartridge until instructed to do so. Do not use the cartridge, so the, the part that goes in the machine. Don't use it if you've opened it. After two minutes, it starts to oxidize and it will ruin the results. You're not supposed to bump the tester while it's running. Um, and there's a list of codes. Here's the guide. So we're gonna go through this uh, on the video here so you have the instructions. You use their finger stick device and you clean your fingers before you do this. And this lancet, when you press it, is gonna perforate your skin and you need a dot size so to give you an idea of how big that is. Okay, so for size comparison here, I want you to see compared to um, a copper US penny, that's about the size we're going for. So a little bigger than the text on a penny. Um, if we get that right up close, you can see it's about the size of two of those numbers as a circle. And we can tell that this one is from 1970 eight and so it's actually solid copper meaning it's antimicrobial and you can kind of tell the greenish white color it's starting to patina very lightly if something goes wrong there's a whole list of different codes that will tell you how to problem shoot or troubleshoot there if you need to look at this in more detail you can freeze the video at any point and read what is said. This is actually two-sided too, so I'll flip this over. We see that this provides helpful hints. It gives you a 1-800 number. It describes what the A1C test is, what the package includes as the kit content, when you prepare to take the test, what to do with the results, storing the unit, don't use it after it's expired, warnings about this, and then there's even a section on here on the quick guide where you can record your log for the first and second test and another link to their 1-800 number. Now, bonus content, you can see that I logged my data here. My goal was to have an A1C between four and five and it was 4.5, which is fun because it contains both numbers. Extra bonus material here, we see a sheep printing in black PETG, that makes it a black sheep. Get the analogy or pun, black sheep, ha ha ha. This is an official Prusa file. That's an original Prusa Mini, as you can tell from the text on the cooling fan assembly heatsink and the labeling of the drive motor for the belt there. I believe I have it operating in stealth mode, so it's less loud. Good times. 3D printing is cool.